believe things are getting better. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that when we hold out, things do get better. And this too shall pass. We thank you for how you've allowed us to be here together as a family. Friends, God, thank you for how you've bound, bound strife, animosity. Anything that would cause separation, we call it now. Lord of God, underfoot, we bless your name. For your good and your mercy endures forever. Now let the words of our mouth, the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength, and our Redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you this morning. My good friends. It's good to be in the house of God. Amen. God is doing just what he promised. And that is to keep his people. Those that keep their minds on him, what will he do? Keep your mind in perfect peace, and we thank you today. Lord of God, we thank you for how different ones have traveled the highways. Thank you for coming across the bridge, my friends, those that have journeyed across the bridge, those that have journeyed any uh, direction, I mean, from any direction coming. We thank you. And uh, today, we are just blessed, Lord of God, to have God's word still in our midst. We thank God for his word, for he sent his word to heal us, and we thank God for healing. Uh, I, I've been reading this book. I've been just reading. And this book by Philip Yancey, and since it is being recorded, I guess, it's, it's, it, the book is called The Bible Jesus Read. So it's a good, excellent book. I'll be just using just a little bit of it. But I, I, was, I was going through as I was reading some here and some there, and uh, God, real, something really dawned on me. As much as I have read, uh, in the area of the Bible. And uh, I, if you will, we're going to go right into the word before we uh, get carried away. I want you to go to the book of Genesis. In the book of Genesis, the 15th chapter of the book of Genesis. Amen. In the 15th chapter, I, I'm going to go right uh, let me see here. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to read just uh, pieces of the 15th chapter if you have it. Uh, if you need a Bible, just raise your hand. We'll get you one. If you've got your uh, pen, you can, I mean your, your phones, you can look it up. Uh, if, you don't, if you're not on our website or whatever, our net, what is it? Internet. Uh, we, can, we can give it to you. So we'll give you the password. <laughs> 15th chapter of the book of uh, Genesis. It says, After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will, what will you give me, seeing I go childless? And the heir of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus, then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the, wor the word of the Lord came to him saying, this one shall not be thy heir, but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And then he brought him outside and said, look, now towards the heavens. And count the stars, if you are able to number them. And he said to him, so shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord. And, and look, this six verse is phenomenal. And he believed the Lord. And he believed the Lord. And, and, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. And he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? And he said to him, bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, and a three-year-old ram and turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he brought all these to him and cut them into down the middle and placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came 
to the carcass, Abram drove them away. And when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror of great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, No certainly, no certainly, that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them and will afflict them 400 years. Look at somebody say 400 years. 400 years. Why, why, why am I looking at you saying 400 years? The United States was, was formed in 1776. Amen. The United States, 1776. Am I right? They, uh, George Washington and them were called by God, and they, they formed a, a country called the United States of America in 1776. Now, if I was to count 1776, 1876 was 100 years. 1976 was what? We are not even 250 years old. We haven't even reached 300 years. Abraham's descendants, we, I really didn't think about this, 400 years. Well, why are you hammering 400 years, preacher? Do you know how much we've accumulated in our thought pattern and the way we do business and the way we act and the way we serve 400 years? I mean, 200, 30 plus years. We've changed a lot, and we're changing even more. Well, why are you going there? Stay with me. Let me show you something here. This blessed me tremendously. Uh, I'm going to use for a subject, so uh, before I forget, I'm going to give it to you. Don't forget, remember God. Don't forget, remember God. Why in the world would you say don't forget, remember God? It's so easily to forget. I want to give you a definition I wrote it down, and you would think you would know, or I would know, but I had to write it down, the definition. First of all, I wrote down the definition for forget. Forget. To be unable to remember. <laughs> a lack, to lack concern for, to banish from one's thought. I have set stuff down and forgot where I put it. I'm talking, <laughs> I've... <laughs> I've lost my eyeglasses more times than I can remember. I, 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 and then I, I try to backtrack. I'm looking in the bathroom and see, without my glasses, I can't see too good. Everything's pretty much a blur. I'm looking at y'all, all I see is blur. So I'm looking around. Now what I've done, I've put glasses, I've staged a set so I know where if I lose these, where I can get a pair so I can find these. How many of you ever know? How many of you? I've done this. Now this was kind of. I, I couldn't find my glasses, and they were on my face. How many of you in here lost keys? Right here in the church, lost my set of keys to, to my Diamante, and I knew, I knew. Now, first of all, I drove my car here, so they had to be here. They had to be here. Now, here's what's ironic. I could not find those keys. Man, I looked everywhere. I looked in the trash can. I said, maybe I threw them away. I looked in the trash cans. I knew I hadn't even been around. Right. Looked on the stairs, looked in grass. And after a while, I started visualizing <laughs> that they were somewhere on the ground. Here's how, here, it, it, this real, really blew your mind. I, I, was in, I was in Conway, South Carolina, looking in the same bag that I had put them keys in, and there was my keys. About six months later, I had to tow my car from here all the way to, to Mitsubishi to get a set of keys made. <laughs> Do you know how bad I felt after I looked in that bag? I looked in that bag hundreds of times. I looked in that bag. I flipped that bag upside down and shook it up, and I could not find those keys. But you, you would think, you would think, you would think we would not forget. You'd think. Uh... I want to use the word for remember, the definition for remember. To recall to, to the mind or retain in the mind. One, one of the things I'm finding, glory to God, that the, not just the older I'm getting, but the more that's going on in my life, I, I'm forgetting more. How, how many know what I'm talking about? You can be so busy, 
storing so much in your your mind can only hold so much. It, it, uh, it uh, cause uh, you ever heard of the expression a nervous breakdown? Uh, a mind that, that you didn't put so much in your mind, and, and it doesn't take much today because we got so much going on. I I told I told y'all and and I'm finding that this is a fact. I've shut my TV down. My wife, I'm, I'm since I'm so close to selling it, I can't because I know one day I'll switch around and I might want to look at it every now and then. But uh, I I walked in and I've set a routine for my life is that uh, I was reading a, a special. Uh, book that I'm reading now along with everything else and this individual here's what he said he said because I did I wanted to know God I made it a purpose to shut stuff down that was avoiding me from getting connected and 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 he talks about turning the radio off and the TV and everything why well, I, I did that for for numerous reasons but I found out that I'm beginning to remember more I'm, I'm like, wow. And I'm shutting. Now, this, you do what you do. I ain't telling you to turn your TV off and sell them. Because you ain't going to get mine unless you give me more than what I paid for it. But, um, <laughs> so that'll stop you from asking me to buy it. That's just, for those that are thinking that he might sell it. But, here's what I was, as I'm reading, and this thing really blew my mind because I said, 400 years. Now, you would have thought, that somebody would have been talking about 400 years that we were going to go through. But nobody was, obviously, I'm going to show you something else. Noah, his three boys, well, Noah's wife, eight people. Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their three wives went, they were on the other side. They were literally on the other, now I want you to also know that the, the Garden of Eden was still there. For those that don't know, they can look at the Garden of Eden, but they couldn't go in. There was an angel. Now, they saw the angel. It wasn't like, what's over there swirling around? They knew because Adam had passed it down. We can't go back over there. Now, you would have thought that after the flood and after them coming to the other side, and going through all that they went through, all of a sudden, no mention of God. You read it. They did not talk about God whatsoever. It talked about, it talked about Noah getting drunk. Most people remember Noah getting drunk, but they don't remember anything about Noah talking about God. You don't remember anything about Sham, Ham, or Japheth, which is his three sons, or his daughters, or his wife, talking about God. All of a sudden, God was forgotten. God was lost somewhere in the uniqueness of what we do. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if I was to take a poll in this church, how many of y'all read your Bible this week, you'd be amazed how many of y'all even pick it up. You'd be amazed. Amen. Amen. As much as we talk about reading the Bible, and you got to get the word in you to get it out of you. <laughs> it ain't in you, you ain't getting it out of you. <laughs> no word in, no word out. Now, now here's what, what's amazing. It's not until you get in a fix. You get in trouble, you looking under the rock for God. And how many know I'm telling the truth? You, you, you looking for God. Get sick, get sick, get sick. Get, get deadly sick. You're going to look for God. Glory to God, you're going to look for him. Get in a fix, you're going to look for God. Why is that? Why is it it's not? Now, I want to show you something. In the book of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy is the closing speech of Moses. For those that don't know, Moses, was, Moses grew up in the house of Pharaoh. Very educated. They, them, them Egyptians were no joke. They were very knowledgeable. Uh, they, they, they were the cutting edge. If you wanted to go to college, you went to Pharaoh's university. <laughs> Amen. If you could get in. If you could get in, you had to take the test and most of the Hebrews ain't getting in. If you were the Hebrew, you ain't getting in. You had to be basically an Egyptian to get in. But God, somebody say, but God. God will open up doors where no man can open. He'll take a baby that should have been thrown to the gators. Put him in a boat, let him float down, and let an Egyptian go to God, a, 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 
a princess, thank you, a priestess, a princess who looked at him and knew he was a Hebrew boy and grabbed him up and, and asked for his mama to take care of him. Paid his mama to take care of him. I tell you, you'll be amazed what God will do for you when God, when you find favor and God got something in your life, he'll make your, he'll make your boss bring you cookies. Instead of, instead of you bringing the boss coffee, the boss will be bringing you coffee and cookies. And don't even know why they're doing it and keep doing it. Well, keep in mind now, Moses, 40 years old, at 40 years old, and, and sometimes you got a calling. How many of y'all know you got a calling in your life? God will put a calling in you. He'll put a calling in you. And you're wondering, you know, what's going on? So, and, and, and that drive will drive you, if you to your destiny. If you, if you focus, it'll drive you. That would, I, I, I've always thought about this. How in the world did those Wright brothers come up with an airplane? Literally. It was a drive in them. That them bro, I'll tell you something. To, to fly, now, if you look at, that was in the late 1900s. Look at where we're at in the 2000s. Those boys got a, a, a premonition. They had a drive to put together a plane. And that thing just bounced off the ground. Ain't go far about from here to that door and bounced back down and bounced up. Look at what we're doing now. You know what amazes me? I can look at my watch. For those that don't have one, this is a. <laughs> and it is cheap. And if you go on Amazon, you can get it cheap. So pastor ain't spending a whole lot of money for nothing. I look at this thing, and, and it's, it's amazed me. I can get a phone call, and I'm looking at my arm. I'm like, Jesus. I can, I can hit it, and I can talk on a watch. I can remember back in the day uh, for that uh, uh, Buck Rogers. This is way before some of y'all time. I'm sorry. How many Buck Rogers remembers in here? Thank you, Buck Rogers. I got a few Buck Rogers in here. There's a few mother babies we waving them. And, and, and they would, you know, I remember for those that, for those saw crawl, how many of y'all remember Star Trek? Oh, yeah. Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Talking. But here's what happens. Moses, 40 years old, Moses takes it upon himself, and sometimes you've got to watch. You might move faster than God wants you to move. You have to stay patient. Look at somebody say, patience possess you your soul. In patience, you'll possess your mind, will, and intellect. You get in a hurry, you'll, get, you'll go crazy. You'll miss stuff. Don't get in a hurry. Some people say, oh, you, you ain't getting in a hurry because you're old. You don't want to rush to die. No. I just learned that just be, whoa. Sometimes you don't put in a microwave. You don't put everything in a microwave. Try to cook a good pot of greens in the microwave. Good pot of beans. Put them in the microwave. I, I dare you. I'm going to cook my collard greens in the microwave. Watch it. I don't care if you put fat meat in it. I don't care if you put a turkey in there. It ain't going to come out right. You got to take it. You got to put that on a slow boil. How many know what I'm talking about? You get a, yay! You, you want to cook a good pot of beans, you got to start them out slow. You got to work with them. You got to work with You got to let them do what they do. That's why most of y'all threw away your crock pots. <laughs> so at the age of 40, Moses, Moses jumps out ahead of God. Yeah. But God had to push him into a place because right now you're not ready. But I want to take 40 years of your life on the backside of a mountain and put you out there with sheep. Hello. You're going to be a, a shepherd of sheep. You're going to take your time and you're going to work those sheep. I honestly believe Moses had already resolved in his heart that at the age of whatever, I'm going to retire as a sheep herd. I'm done. But you'll be surprised because God will call you. Look at somebody say, God will call you. God will call you. That's why I don't feel like, oh, God, I'll never get. No, God will call you at your time. I, I, I did this and, and this, I asked God, I said, Lord, why is it? That you would take, well, first of all, I can understand you telling Moses that you're going to give him children. But why would you wait to 99 years old? You look at Zechariah, he was an old man. Most people that God really want to do his thing in, he want to do with old folk. Y'all looking at me saying, yeah, yeah. Because he, 
yeah, and, and the reason that that is, let me show you something. If he was a youngster, he would have thought it was him and Sarah. What you gonna tell me, God? I can have all the kids when I me and, me and Cynthia were popping them out. I had to stop. Why? Stop. Stop. I got five kids. Stop. Five kids. At 29, I looked around. At 20, at the rate I was going, I was following honey and sunny. Stop. <laughs> stop. I told my wife, your name ain't honey, it's Cynthia. And I'm James, but I'm not Sonny. And we stop. <laughs> So, so we can look at God. You know what I'm saying? But at 99 and 91, they had already resolved. Ain't no way. Now, I, I had to laugh at this because uh, Adam was 930 years old when he died. So they was having kids at 800. They was having kids at seven and 600 years old. But they were on that side of the... Abraham looks at God, and I know within myself, I know. Let me tell you something, church. When you stay with God, I mean, now, don't just stay with God. Stay in his word. Yes. See, I got to stop saying stay with God because you can't stay with God unless you stay with his word. Look at somebody and say, that's the truth. That's don't tell me you staying with God and you ain't staying with his word. Right. You ain't staying with no God. You might be in the church or around the church, but you ain't in God. Oh, y'all listen to this. This is good word here. You got to stay in the word to stay with God. Yes. Let me show you something. If I'm in the house with Cynthia, and I'll never talk to Cynthia. I might be in the house with Cynthia, but I don't know Cynthia. As a matter of fact, eventually Cynthia will leave me or I'll leave her. Write this down in your spirit. You cannot walk together with anybody unless you agree with them. Yes. How can two walk together except they be in agreement? You can't be with nobody. You won't be with your job if you ain't agreeing with it. How many of you quit a job because you didn't agree with it? Amen. Huh? Stop driving a car because you didn't agree with the way it was running. I ain't driving this brand new thing no more. We out of agreement. <laughs> Left a house because you wasn't in agreement with it. Huh? Amen. You, you moved because you wasn't no longer in agreement. I can't stay with this house. The rent's too high. I can't agree with this. Hey Amen. How many know I'm telling the truth? Amen. People stop smoking because they can't agree with it. You stop, you stop. When you stop, you want to stop doing something, stop agreeing with it. Amen. So, all of a sudden, God calls this young man. And this blew my mind. Now, I want you to visualize this. Back in the 70s, I'll never forget it because I was say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. I had a little, te little afro and, uh, I felt blacker than I've ever felt in my life. Hey Amen. Whatever that meant, I felt black. And uh, I remember back then, the Black Panthers, and uh, especially the Muslims at that time, uh, we were formulating an idea, let's all of us leave the United States. And, and just like Heather just said, so we were going back to Africa if they would take us. <laughs> First of all, I didn't know, we didn't really ask, but I want you to visualize this. Visualize this. Visualize this with me. Say all of us, people of color, and you're going to have some Caucasian join with you because that's what they do. Yeah. Amen. And we all get in a big boat, ships, carnivals, Norwegians. <laughs> all of us get on these boats. And, 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 and a nation says, you can have all this property, this island, whatever, it's yours. Take it. Now, we all get there. Now, first of all, I want to know what government are we going to use? What governmental system? What laws? Now, the other thing, too, who perpetrated the idea? Who was it? Because when I start having problems, I'm going to him or to her, whoever the perpetrator was. So whoever the captain was that says, let's go, I'm going to look to him. Now, when I'm hungry, you, you better have something to eat. And Lord knows I'm going to get thirsty, so you better have something to drink. I got babies crying. And then me and D get in a fight. Who was wrong? So you got to tell us who was wrong. He hit me first. This is what Moses had to deal with. This is what Moses had to deal with. Had to deal with all these people, millions of folk, 
coming to a place. And could you imagine every day? Now, just here, I could not imagine me taking you crew to Guyana. No, glory to God, which I wouldn't. Just because my name is Jimmy, I'm not going to take you. And I got to listen to every one of your complaints. I got to listen to you, and because you wasn't happy, and because you hungry, and because you got one quail and he got two. My house isn't warm. You said. Now, immediately, you will revert back to where you came from. How many know that be the truth? You're going to go back. You're going to go back. You're going to go back to Egypt. I get you. We get started. I'm standing there. You're standing with me. The Egyptians going to kill us. They didn't even want us back as slaves. They're just going to kill us. Whoever it was, they were going to kill us. I'm standing there in front of all this water. The Delaware Bridge, Delaware Memorial Water, uh, Delaware River. And we ain't got no boats, no nothing to get across. And I guarantee y'all going to get hot with me. You're going to say, why you brought us all the way from New Jersey to kill us? For God to kill us. And I'm standing there. And I'm standing there wondering how in the world. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you, most of us, 99.9% .9 of us, would get hot and start swimming. Forget y'all. I'll swim. I, I, before I deal with y'all, I'll jump in that lake and swim myself across. If I drown, let me drown. And here's what this man dealt with. He's dealing with all these complaints. All the, now, here's what really blew my mind. If it's in you, only God can get it out of you. That Egypt was in him. Four Hundred years. That's why when Moses went up on the mountain, it took them that long to make a calf. Because that was one of the Egyptian gods. They knew that God. They knew Egyptians had gods. Matter of fact, if you do a little study, a little reading, for the plagues that came were the gods that Egypt had. And God showed his God. God showed himself to be God more so than their God. The calf, the flies, and all that. Oh, yeah, God showed himself real. The thing that blessed me was the fact that it wasn't Moses, it was God. When they cried out for water, God made water come from a rock. Only a God can do that. God will make water come from a rock. God said, you want to eat? I'll give you what I eat. God, he brought angels food. You had the nerve to complain about angels food. Glory to God. God said, you ain't got to worry about clothes. I make sure it don't wear out. Could you imagine this joker looking like I just bought it, took it off the rack 40 years later? Shoes didn't grow. If you wore a nine when you left, you wore a nine in the desert. Ain't worry about bungees and cunions and whatever. Your feet were just as, you notice, you notice, you notice. You don't read nowhere where they were sick. They died because they were disobedient. They wasn't sick. Them folk didn't get sick. Glory to God, they were sin sick. They didn't get physically sick. Woo, glory to God. Could you imagine? But they forgot. They just forgot. Didn't take them long. Could you imagine we standing there and glory to God, the Delaware opened up. I tell y'all, come on, let's walk. You got to be crazy. I said, Duh. I lift up my, I lift up my watch. <laughs> I, lift, I lift up, and that water roll back. Could you imagine that water rolling back? And you, I said, come on, y'all, come on. No, 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 a lot of y'all don't. I ain't going, on. I can't swim. <laughs> you, we, 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 we start walking on dry land. Could you imagine? And here we are. We, and we say it. We say it. I, if I had did that, if I had been there, if I had done that, no, come on. I'm going to read something here in the book of Deuteronomy. Go right about the eighth chapter. Moses is now at a place in life because of the people. Don't let people steal your joy. 
Don't, don't, God, I'm, I'm saying that even though it'll, it'll happen, but get your joy back quick. Get it, take it back from the devil. Because it's not the people, it's the devil using the people. And Moses then already, now here's what I want you, also want you to visualize. This is deep. 40 years, 40 years, 40 years. 400 years, 40 years. 400 years, 40 years. They, when they left Egypt, 11 days they could have been to the promised land. 11 days. 11 days they could have walked in. But the problem was they didn't know who had their back. They heard of him. They even saw what he did, but they didn't know him. See, there's a difference in, in, in knowing. Look, it's not until you know a person that you know a person. And if you don't know them, you ain't going to trust them. If I don't know you, I ain't trusting you. How many of y'all in here will give me your pocketbook? Well, you kind of know, well, Pastor ain't going to steal because, you know, Pastor. But just say somebody walked off the street and you gave them. No, you ain't going to do that. Uh, and to tell you the truth, I love all y'all, but I'm going to give Cynthia my wallet because y'all might take something out and say you borrowed it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> messing with you. Just messing with you. Look. He's already found out God told him, because I told you to speak to the rock. First time I told you to strike it. There's a reason I wanted you to speak to the rock and not strike it, because speaking to the rock meant that you are not going to smoke my son twice. He's going to do one. This is a one-time good deal. He, Jesus was only bruised once. You ain't going to crucify him again. He ain't coming down here not near one more time to die on the cross for us. If you don't take it now, you ain't going to get it. I'm going to share this also with you. If you don't leave in the rapture, you're going to give your head to go. You will die to be saved. If you do not leave in the rapture, write it down somewhere. If you do not leave in the rapture, you better be ready to sacrifice your life because you're going to die to be saved. You are not going to go just say, Lord, save me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I receive Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. It ain't going to work after the rapture. You're going to lay your head down. He's going to take your head, man. So if you can't give your life now, you ain't going to give your life then. Y'all hear me? So guess what? You know the deal. I ain't going to say no more. In the eighth chapter, Moses has already been told, you ain't going. You ain't going. Uh, the best I'm going to let you do is look at it. Could you imagine Moses climbed up on that rock on uh, Mount Nebo and looked? Now, I don't know what kind of emotions, mixed emotions, no doubt. And Moses said, I done took all this, took all the time, and I'm not going in. Now, here's what also blew my mind. Every one of those babies under the age of, at the age of 18 and back, I want you all to think about this, 18 and back, no, 19, 19, wrong, 19 and back, 20 in this way were dead. At 20, how many of us, 20 years, anybody over 20 years old, raise your hand. Yeah, yeah, they were done. They were done. He wasn't speaking to, the only people that he was speaking of, of the original crew, was Caleb and Joshua. That's, right. That's the only two of the original crew. Now, you imagine 40 years, to 400 years. I want y'all to picture this. 400 years, 70 people went in 400 years prior, and all these folk are left. 400 years, now here we got 40 years later, all of them dead. Except for eight, 19 and back. Now, Moses is speaking to this whole different crew. Here's what I want you to write down in your spirit. You cannot put old wine and new wine skins. You can't do it. God knew. If I let any of y'all go in, and the reason why Caleb and Joshua were because when they went to the promised land, they wanted to go. They said, let's go. Let's go. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Go, team, go. And the rest of them screaming, No! We look like grasshoppers in their sight. Yeah, it's a good land. Yeah, God didn't lie about the good land, but we can't go. We cannot fight. We cannot. And when they said cannot, God said seal. Whenever you start talking to God about what you can't do, you got to be careful because God will lock you in that, man. I'll never go to college. I can't do that. I'll always be broke. You sure will be. Ain't no good men in this world. You'll never find one. Ain't no good men left. He'll have you in a place of total blindness and oblivious. And every young man you find will be no good. 
Because you don't know, you can't see a good man. I can't see a good man. A good man will come up and kiss you on the lips, but you can't see him because he's a no good man. Because that's all you know. Oh, y'all didn't hear that. Did you grab hold of that? I'll always be broke. You will always be broke. Don't matter how much money you get, you'll always be broke. You'll get it, but you won't keep it because you'll always be broke. You can have what you say because what you say. And I'm going to bless you right now with this. Look, look, look. We're the only ones that God created that can speak power. Death in life is in the power of the tongue. We're the only ones that God made that can talk. And when the snake talked, it wasn't the snake talking. Now, I'm going to show you, this, blew, this will blow your mind. When Satan said what he said, he said, I will, lift my, I will lift my seat above the high. And God said, because as an angel, you start speaking like you could, I will lock it, you never will. And so what he does, he uses us because we have created power. And you know this, glory to God, we'll damn God. Because we can, but he can't. Y'all didn't hear that. Did you hear? See, we're the ones that can curse God. He can't. We're the ones that can curse one another. He can't. We're the ones that can hurt one another. He can't. He has to use us to do it because he's an angel. An angel can only do what God tells him to do or speak what God told him to speak. Y'all better read this. Hey, Gabriel came to Mary. He came to, and he said, I am the one who stands before God. He told Zachariah, I stand before God. God told me to come and tell you. He's only going to say what God told him to say. He ain't going to have nothing to do it. Ain't going to take nothing away. Oh, glory to God. Did you grab hold of something there? Now, look at this here. This, in the book of Deuteronomy, this blows my mind. He says, every commandment which I command you today, you must, this is the first, eighth chapter, first verse, Every commandment which I command you today, you must be careful to observe. Look at it. You must be careful to observe that you may what? Live and multiply and go in and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. Now, I'm going to share something with you. You're talking about what land? God will give you a home. Amen. People up there tell me, oh, man, I can't. If you can pay rent, you can buy. Right. Y'all looking at me like that. Eh. If you can't pay rent, you cannot buy. So if you're in a house and you, if you're in a place and you're not paying, no matter where you go, you ain't going to pay. You can come stay with mama, you ain't going to pay. Stay with me, you ain't going to pay. Because it's just, ain't no pay in you. Are y'all listening to me? I want a house, but it ain't in you. You didn't live with me for all these years. You ain't give me nothing. Now you think you're going to go out there and give a stranger something? You don't know him. You, how many of you ever seen your mortgage man? Never seen him. My mortgage company's in Idaho, Hudak, Padok, somewhere. And he sent me a letter. And he, when he sent me that note, you know what it says on that note? You owe me. He'll send that note. You owe me. I don't know what he looked like. He ain't giving me my money. I don't even know who he is. But watch him. He'll come take your house, too, in a New York minute. You're grabbing hold. Okay, observe and to do, you may multiply and, and go and possess the land which the Lord swore to give you. God told you, God said this, this ain't Pastor Simmons. God said, I'll give you a car that you can drive. I'll give you a car to break down on you all the time. The reason why a car breaks down on us all the time because we don't take care of it. Or we bought junk. You either bought junk or you bought something you ain't taking care of. So it's going to turn to junk. So if you bought junk and you ain't taking care of it, Y'all, most of us, and I'm going to share this with you because you need to hear this. As a car dealership dealer, as I was at one time, uh, we turned to, the first thing I noticed most people did, they didn't look at the oil, didn't look at the engine. They turned on the radio. Yeah. And we love for them to turn the radio, turn it up real high. You ain't going to hear nothing. <laughs> Drive that joker. You ain't going to see the smoke coming out the back. <laughs> you ain't going to hear the thump of the tire, turn the radio. And, and you notice most of them will have a good radio. And most of them radios work. I don't care if it ain't got no oil in it, no transmission fluid, as long as that radio play. <laughs> but now we've become wiser because we know. I tell a guy, you want to you mess with a salesman, especially the backside salesman, don't turn the radio on. 
You go out there and lift that hood up. Watch it. Now, if he starts sweating and start looking at you, don't buy the car. <laughs> don't buy the car. If he starts looking at you, would you look at? If he asks you, why are you looking at the engine you have already told you? Don't buy this junk. Y'all better listen. I hope somebody wrote that down. Now, watch. Watch this. Watch this. Okay. And, and the, that the Lord swore. And, and you shall remember that the Lord your God leads you all the way. These what? It was God who led you, not Moses. Moses is telling them, what me? I'd have quit. Matter of fact, I didn't even want to come. I saw that bush burning. I had my fire extinguisher out. <laughs> I was going to put that joke out. I had to go, but it was not me. If any preacher, if anybody tell you, anybody in the word of God tell you it's them, get away from them. Amen. Get away. Run, 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 Forrest, run. <laughs> run. Look at what I can do. When the person starts talking about what they can do, get away from them. Because now they're selfish. They're self-righteous. And their self-righteousness won't take you nowhere. Look at what I've done. When I start boasting, telling my wife, if you hadn't married this old Negro, you ain't had nothing. She started talking like that. God said, okay, we'll show you. I'll make you as crippled as a dog. Case in point. Case in point. Y'all looking at me like, what in the world? Nebuchadnezzar was one of the most powerful kings ever ruled, other than Solomon. He's second man under Solomon. God gave him a dream. Told him in the dream. He calls for his main man. Daniel comes up. Daniel says, here's the deal. This is what the dream means. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't say it. Didn't he tell him? Don't say it. One day he was out there looking at all his stuff. Mm. Look at what I've done. Look at me. Look, 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 look. The dream was, the day you do it, you're going to eat grass like a cow. You're going to be out there wandering around. Your hair going to look like feathers. What did he do? Move, move. For three long years. Three years. Don't you, don't, don't take God's credit. Give him the glory. He'll give you his look. All you need is the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. That's all we need. You told him, no, 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 no. And you shall remember the Lord, and you shall what? Remember that the Lord your God led you all these 40 years. Remember. And know that, that know and know what was in your heart. No, and um, look, look, to humble you and test you to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Look, he was not talking to near one of that original crew. Not the, the, who, what, who, what was their names? Caleb and Joshua. And Caleb and Joshua was on point. Matter of fact, matter of fact, Joshua was sitting there first assistant under the bishop. He said that like that. And Caleb was the second assistant. So they sat back there with him. He's talking to a whole new crew. Not near one of them original crew. All of them were dead. All of them. Marry them and, 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 and you got to watch when you talk about the man of God, woman of God. I just thought I'd throw that at you. He had married an African woman. His, Moses' wife was African. And uh, they had a, Miriam and, and uh, Miriam got hot. Women yeah. get hot quick. Yeah. <laughs> That's just what women do. You, you, you ain't married one of us. <laughs> so she got hot. <laughs> I ain't messing, baby. Look at it. And <laughs> Moses, Moses had humbled himself real good. He became very humble. He was a very humble man. God says, I dare you. I dare you crack on my man. No, oh, it ain't going down like that. It ain't going down like that. Miriam looked up, he said, okay. She was as white as a, as a, as a lily flower. She just turned just as leprous as you can get her. She crying there. Oh, oh Jesus. Moving, lot looking at her. Oh my God. I'm about ready to turn. Am I going to turn like her? And here's what blew my mind. God said, okay, here's what I'm going to do. Moses, you pray for. Her. You pray for. Her. That same one who she was cracking on had to go and lay hands. 
And, and God, God said, look, but here's what I'm going to do. She ain't going to get healed immediately. She's going to stay out seven days. She's going to hang, hang out the camp. Y'all better listen to this. This is good. This is good. This is good. I like it too. Okay, so he humbled you, allowed you to hunger, and fed you with manner. Look, look, allowed you to hunger and fed you with manner, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you known, make you know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by what? Oh, glory to God. Jesus said it. Jesus went right into Deuteronomy. Glory to God. That, that, the word manner means what is it? They'll never, they, they could not take that and break it down. If they had a piece of manna right now and the scientists would be on it, they'd be like, what is it? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Only thing they could write on the ingredient box, what is it? How many calories? What is it? Huh? Sugar, protein, what is it? How many vitamins? What is it? Because it came from heaven. Oh, glory to God, everything you need, all the new. Man, we can sell manna and make a man. <laughs> Y'all be coming, running for some manna. Go, the God didn't gain no weight. Manna. Look, look, your garments. Look, 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 your garments. Okay, bring it along. Your garments did not wear out on you, nor did your feet swell these 40 years. You know, the baby still had a little baby feet. <laughs> I thought you that was somebody who was thinking it. So somebody out there was thinking, who was thinking it? Come on, raise your hand. Okay, look, look. <laughs> you should know if you're, okay, you should know in your heart that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. Therefore, you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God. Walk in his ways and to fear him. That means admonish, respect him. Look, go into God. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land. Well, go into God. A land of brooks and water, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valley and the hills. A land of wheat, barley, vines, fig trees, pomegranates. A land of olive, a little olive oil and honey. Well, go into God. A land in which you will eat bread without scarcity in which you will lack what? Nothing. A land whose stones are, are, are iron and out of the, those hills you can dig copper. And when you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord, your God, for the land, for the good land, which he has given you. I'll stop right there. When you pull up from that Thanksgiving table, Christmas table, whatever table, you should, when you rub on your stomach, thank God! Everybody at the table should push away from that table and say, thank God. Walking through, walking through Golden Corral. Glory to God. Woo! When you come back with something to praise, you better be thanking God. Lord, I thank you. Could you imagine we did that? Could you imagine? 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 Now look at this here. Look, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring it in. And land in which, which you will eat bread without scarcity. And, and when you have eaten, okay, and, Beware, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments and his statutes which I have commanded you today. Least when you have eaten and are full and have built beautiful houses and dwelt in them and when your herds and your flocks multiply and your servants uh, and, and your silver and your gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Don't forget the Lord. When you got saved, all those in here that are saved, that was God who took you out of bondage. How many know he took you out of bondage? Satan does not. If you're not saved, glory to God, don't let the devil convince you to go to hell because he can't put you in hell. How many know that? The devil cannot put you nowhere. The devil put me in hell. The devil take. No, he can convince you to go with him, but he cannot put you there. People say, well, the devil. The devil can't make you do nothing. This will make you do it. This will make you do it. 
the Olo in this. You start cry, craving after, you know. <clears throat> That's why when Jesus, Jesus made a correction, some of those brothers, some of the young men, my back, all the men, old and young, he's talking about adultery. He said, if a man looketh after a woman and lusteth after her, he's already com committed adultery in his heart. So Jesus was saying, all y'all guilty, because I know you. So that gave me to say this. If you're here, which you are, unless you're a figment of my imagination, and if you're a figment of my imagination, let me go where the real people are. <laughs> yeah. If you're, if you're here, which you are, and you say, Lord, if you, first of all, if you're wondering about salvation, if you're wondering, you're not saved. I'm going to tell you that right now. Because salvation is a no-so. you got to know you're saved. If you're wondering, that means the devil's got you like this, and he's convincing you it ain't. You'll hear me. If you've been haphazard in your walk, mm -hmm. if, you, if, you're, if you're at a place, if you're haphazard, wondering, you need to come up here and touch and agree with me right now because he could call you today. Today when you hear his voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. What he meant by that is that if he called today, he today, because you don't know about tomorrow. If you're saying to yourself, Lord, I got to get closer. I, I got to get closer. I, I, I heard the word. I know the deal. You come over here and touch and agree. Touch and agree with me, because I know the deal. I've been there, done that. Matter of fact, I got two T-shirts hanging in the closet. 